Hey everybody, it's Fox with Foxo Games, and let's talk about video games and political agendas. Well, unfortunately, in recent years, we've seen the video game industry get sucked into the greater political and cultural battles that are happening around us, and as a result, video games themselves have become a sort of political battleground, and I think this is really, really bad. Not only do we see a lot of this happening on gaming news websites, gaming, quote, journalism websites, and in forums, but we are also seeing a lot of this pressure being applied to developers and publishers trying to force them to either change their game or not release their game at all. One of the things that we're being told by this particular side of the political spectrum, oftentimes known as progressive, is that in order for video games to be more inclusive of everybody, in order for more people to be able to enjoy video games, well, we have to change them. They have to, quote, grow up, unquote. Well, as you can tell from the way I'm talking, I completely disagree with this. You see, video games have always been for whoever wants to play them. Granted, boys and men tend to like violent content more than women do, but video games have always been for anybody who wants to play them. Nobody has ever been restricted by any sort of club of men out there from playing the games that they want to enjoy. Video games have never been a quote, boys club. Unquote. In fact, most of the boys I knew growing up, including myself, wanted our female friends to play video games. They wanted their sisters to play video games more, and guess what? A lot of them did. When my wife was growing up, she played video games. She played video games with her brother and some of her friends, including her male friends. And in fact, she still plays video games. Because you know why? Because video games are already for everybody, and they don't need to grow up. New kinds of video games are being made all the time, and that's great, because more video games means more choice. In fact, we have so many choices for the games to play, we can be paralyzed by what's often known as analysis paralysis. You're just looking at this library of games. I know me, when I look at Steam, I've got like 500 games. Well, not, not literally, but I've got hundreds of games there. Then I've got all these games on my shelf for my consoles, and I'm just like, shoot, which one do I play? There are so many games out there that the absolute last thing that we need is to start restricting which games can be made, is to start restricting which games should be translated and localized for certain areas, is to start forcing developers through social pressure to change their games. Because I think it's entirely unnecessary, and I think it's entirely a negative for the industry. I'm sure that you've noticed recently that there are a lot of very loud voices in the video game industry that don't really seem to care a lot about video games, and they seem to care a lot more about their political agenda. In fact, we had one infamous woman who was speaking very loudly about feminist issues in video games who herself admitted she wasn't ever a gamer and doesn't like video games. But suddenly, she decides she's going to come into the video game industry, the video game sphere, and tell everybody what video games must do to change and become better. Obviously, everyone's entitled to their opinion, and if you want to come in and tell people how they can change their video games, you can tell them that. But the problem here is that we don't just have people coming in and saying, hey, I think your game would be better if you did this. We have people coming in and saying, hey, if you don't change your game in this way, you're a bad person, and your video game is bad, and it's hurting people. I think that's ridiculous. These political pundits that have wormed their way into the video game industry seem to want to shame us into feeling bad for playing video games because they're too violent, they have too many guns, there are too many men, there are too many white people, or the women in the video game aren't completely dressed covering all their skin from head to toe. Well obviously I'm exaggerating just a bit on that last one. But what we're essentially told is that in order for us to be able to enjoy video games and feel good about it, the video games must include representation of all groups, and all of the women in these games must be well clothed, apparently, and cover as much skin as possible. And what else do we notice about this political agenda? Well, it seems to be pushing the message of modern feminism, as we've already noticed, of the LGBT movement, of the body image movement, which essentially tells women it's okay to be fat and you should feel good about it. It pushes identity politics, the idea that, hey, we should allow people to pick their own pronouns because that makes sense somehow. You know, we push things like the gender wage gap and the idea of, well, threats towards women in the video game industry is some sort of major problem. Because apparently they think men aren't receiving death threats or violent threats online. In fact, the Pew Research Institute has shown that according to their polls, men tend to receive more online abuse in more violent online abuse than women do. 
But you know what? This isn't a competition about which one of us is most oppressed, because that itself is part of this political agenda. The idea of representing certain groups as oppressed minorities, and that they must be lifted up and given special privileges in order to achieve equality with those who have special privileges. Ultimately, I don't think games need to grow up. I think games will become better in various ways. Graphics, enemy AI, mechanics. All sorts of different things will get better, but one of the things I don't think needs to be better is I don't think video games need to have more politics injected into them. In fact, I think that's one way that video games would regress, is if we started injecting political battles into our video games themselves. Suddenly, characters are pontificating on the dangers of firearms and how they should be outlawed and people shouldn't have them, how they pontificate on the idea of whether or not abortion should be legal. I mean, do you really, really want this kind of stuff in your video games? Is that going to make a video game better, in your opinion? Are you going to enjoy your video games more when they start pushing more real-life political agendas onto you? I know I won't. In fact, I don't even want video games to push my political views, because I don't want video games to be a tool for pushing political agendas. I want video games to be fun, and I want developers to make the kind of games they want to develop. Hey, if a developer wants to make a video game that pushes an overtly progressive agenda, then go for it. I'm not going to buy it, but go ahead. If a video game developer wants to make a game that has girls in skimpy bikinis playing volleyball on the beach, go ahead. I mean, I won't buy that either, but the options are there, and I think they should be. I think there should be plenty of options. And you know what? That's why we have the ESRB. We have ratings to help parents and individuals know what kind of content they're going to find in their games. I think ultimately it's up to us as consumers to decide which way we want this industry to go. If we want it to become a political battleground, then you can keep reading those overtly political video game articles, because every time you visit, you're helping the website. Whether you have an ad blocker or not, every visit to the website increases its prevalence in search engines and shows advertisers that people are reading it. The only way we're going to really help to bring this industry back to the basics, making good games, is by not encouraging those overtly political articles in their writers. Don't read them, don't tweet them out, don't link to them, don't screen cap them, don't tell people about them, just have nothing to do with them. In fact, there's a really great Chrome extension that will allow you to automatically block websites that you feel are unethical or that are pushing a political agenda and you feel it's just not best for the video game industry. It's called GG Blocker and there's a link available in the video description. Of course, I'd love to hear your opinion, and I know this could probably get pretty heated in the comments, so let's at least try to be respectful as we share those opinions, which may vary a lot. I'm Fox with Foxo Games, and I'll see you guys next time.